Hello and welcome to JavaScript Evangelist. So in the last video, we learned how to insert data into our MongoDB, uh, that is Meet Your Mongo. And uh, in today's video, we are going to learn how to load that uh, data from our database into our client-side JavaScript. So first of all, I'm going to uh, remove this code, uh, which is into our server main.js file. So that otherwise, if, if I just save this file again and again, and if, if I try to run this again, uh, these players will keep on uh, getting inserted every time I run the server. So I'm just going to comment this out for now so that you can uh, read this code in future. I'm just going to copy this line uh, so that just to let you know that uh, this players or this actual uh, players.js, uh, the API file which we created inside import API players.js, which is on the server side, runs exactly same on the front end as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, just space this code for now over here. And uh, as well, uh, I'm just going to copy this line, which says uh, import players and I'm going to paste it here again. I'm just going to make sure that path is correct. So main.js file is here. We have to go one folder outside and go inside the import folder. So yes, that's what we are doing. And we are getting the players file. And let's just run the uh, front end for now and see what happens. Okay, we are getting an array, but that's an empty array. So you might be wondering, oh, we are doing this, but why we are not getting this? So basically, this is an asynchronous call. So if you know about JavaScript asynchronous code that you might know that. So JavaScript is running before even the server response is receiving. So so we are running our JavaScript even before this response is ready for us. So we have to add a simple script. Uh, I would say simple function provided to us uh, by Meteor. But before that, so I'll just explain you in a short, uh, how does this work? So this Meteor Mongo is connected to our Meteor via Node.js and client on the client side, the same uh, Meteor is running uh, through a client side uh, Meteor library and the browser is getting rendered but node.js and client-side javascript they're connected to each other via a web socket okay so i've just opened an online photoshop version uh, in a nutshell uh, i'm just going to show you try to explain you in a simple way how uh, mongodb works so we have our this mongodb database which is like this and pardon my drawing so which is connected to Node.js server. So MongoDB connects to Node.js and Node.js is connected to our client side library. So this is our JavaScript, which is we are writing. But since we are using Meteor, Meteor also creates a web version of Mongo that's called mini Mongo, which is connected to our front end JavaScript, which uh, actually stays on the browser itself which is not yet connected to the server whatever data we receive uh, it gets rendered to our browser we have our mini mongo but this mini mongo uh, let's say we add a data on our front end via javascript it gets stored into mini mongo but it is synced up to our mongodb database via ddb protocol so DDP is uh, it's 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 used for sync up uh, sync like sync between uh, our MongoDB and Mini Mongo. Uh, DDP is uh, called Distributed Data Protocol. So DDP is here, and that's how we are connected. Uh, sorry for my bad drawing, but uh, this is what I can explain. Uh, but don't confuse yourself. So. We're just quickly going to connect now uh, since as you know this is not working since this is an asynchronous call uh, kind of an asynchronous call basically our ddp is not synced up so mini mongo and mongodb is not synced up together so we have to use uh, a small function provided to us by uh, meteor and i'm going to insert just that so i'm going to import tracker yes so we have a tracker function and 
this tracker function, uh, let's try to run it uh, like in a simple way. Let's see what, how it, uh, what happens next. So I'm just going to call the tracker and tracker has a method called auto run. So inside this auto run, I'm going to add an anonymous function and I'm just going to say underscore DDP ready. Just, uh, I like to uh, write, I like to give functions in name, so it's easy to track. And I'm going to move this console log inside our tracker. And also I'm going to give a some simple name, players list. All right, let's see if it works. And you can already see the data is getting loaded over here and uh, it's it's visible to us. But uh, instead of loading this players from here, what we are going to do is we are going to move this code inside our Meteor startup, which is here. Okay, I'll just put this in. So this Meteor startup will contain our Meteor tracker. I'm going to move our entire code, this entire code uh, inside this. We can try to refactor this afterwards, but for now, let's just uh, do it quickly. And I'm going to load players from our MongoDB now. So as you know, we have this players over here. And I'm going to create uh, another variable over here called players list, which is going to be players.find fetch, and which we are going to get it from database. And uh, rather than loading, oh, we already have a variable over here. So I'll say players data. So rather than loading this players.map, which is over here, we have our players data which is coming from mongodb database and instead of using this players array uh, which is this one i'm going to simply delete this and i'm going to copy this and paste it here and that's it let's check it out if it works so as you can see it's already loading and it's running fine uh, ignore this uh, warning uh, it's it's cause of our unique key ID. Uh, we'll fix that soon in the next video. But that's it from this video. As you can see, we have successfully connected our MongoDB database to our client side uh, uh, Meteor library and React application. And uh, we are already rendering this players list. So stay tuned for the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.